Good morning, NDJ. Hope everyone's well. Lucky you, you get to hear from me. Um, I know it's a lot easier in person, but uh, I know through, uh, through this time we have to do this still over video, but let's see how I do. Uh, I don't really like doing videos like this, but uh, I gotta look at myself. So I guess I have to suffer like you guys having to stare at me. All right, so uh, what I've been doing with the youth kids um, the last little while since the new year is, uh, is talking about um, God's mercies, the mercies that God gives us, what we receive because of salvation. Um, a lot of times I hear uh, from the kids is they're worried that you know either they're they don't have anything to give to God, they don't have any talents, or God can't use them because they they feel insignificant, or that you know because of what sin that's in their lives or the you know the things they struggle with is too great. And God's done with them. He's like washed his hands and he can never use them. He can never forgive them enough or uh, want to use them because of their guilt of what, what's going on in life. So I um, just want to share with you guys the same thing. Just to show us, you know, who God is. And as Christians, uh, if we know Jesus Christ as our Savior, um, what that what happens to us and what, when, how that relationship is different uh, between us and God than it is before we knew him as, as, our, as our Savior before we're converted. And so we're going to look at uh, the story of Jonah. Uh, we know he's a prophet. Um, I mean, you know, knows God very well, knows God's teachings, obeys God. And um, we're going to see how he sinned to God, how he, you know, the sins that he had and uh, disobedience and hatred. Um, but we're going to see how God didn't throw him away, didn't cast him away because Jonah was, um, was saved and Jonah uh, believed in God and obeyed God. And we're going to see how you know, God is there, always there with us. He won't cast us away. He's there to teach us, to mold us into his likeness and to show us our sin and to show us the, you know, how we got to get rid of that. we got to be more like him. And so we see Jonah um, in the first chapter. It's a small book. We know it's an easy one to read through if you want to read that later. Um, but in chapter 1, right off the beginning, uh, God tells Jonah, to arise, to go to Nineveh. Now let me read it here. Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it. For their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish. In the presence of the Lord, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Now it's silly, pretty foolish, right? Like a prophet. Somebody who knows God, thinking that he can hide from God, um, right? It's just like you guys, you know, if your mom and dad say, uh, you know, I to say, you know, Alexis, go clean your room. And Alexis goes, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going uh, to go hide in the basement. I'll go outside. And hopefully, you know, if I do this, they'll forget or they just won't, they'll forget about me. And we know that never happens, right? We wish it did. So does Alexis, but that doesn't happen. Um, and so we think with Jonah, like how foolish can you be? Um, you know, God is everywhere. He knows everything. He's all powerful. And when he asks you something, he's not going to forget about it. We can't hide from him. But even a guy, a, a prophet, um, Jonah is still sinful, right? We all know this. We all have a sinful nature because we are descendants of Adam and Eve. And so Jonah in his, you know, sinfulness thinks that he can hide from God, right? Nineveh was 500 miles approximately away to the east where he was. He decides to go the opposite direction to the west, to the farthest port he can go to, was Tarshish, about 2,500 miles away. Thinking that he's, you know, farther he goes away, um, that God can't see him, can't, um, you know, will forget about him, and that he won't have to do uh, this task that God asks, which is silly, right? But again, sin does that to us. Sin convinces us that uh, we can hide from God, we can ignore God, and that God will, you know, forget about us if we do this. So why why did um, Jonah hate Nineveh? Why did he not want to go to Nineveh? God, because we see later on in um, chapter four that he hates that country. He hates the people. He wants them to perish. He doesn't want them to be saved. Um, kind of a horrible thing for uh, a prophet to um, to feel. Um, we know no uh, no sorry uh, Jonah. Uh, there's history there. He knows the people of Nineveh. He knows the evilness. Maybe he's seen some uh, persecution from them to his people. But being a prophet, we think that uh, Jonah 
would be above that, would know and understand forgiveness and, and want them to be saved, to change their ways. But he doesn't. He has a hard heart against Nineveh. And so he goes, no, I'm not going to, I don't want to save them. And so he runs. Now, even that alone, right, we could say, hey, you know, God would say, yeah, forget you. I'm going to get rid of you and uh, go use somebody else. But because Jonah knows God, he's saved. Um, God is there to show him, to teach him, right? To show him that his ways are wrong and, and, to, and to show God's patience. So we see God's mercies, his patience, his kindness, his grace is being given upon Jonah. So we're doing it. So in the ship, we see <clears throat> he goes down, uh, downstairs, down under the boat, uh, and in the end part of the boat, and he falls asleep. Another way to kind of forget, um, you know, things that cause us stress, right? I think sometimes we can do is we can have an hour of sleep longer because we're stressed out and we don't want to face the world. So we see Jonah going down. Then we see what God does, right? He causes a, a big storm to come. The men of the ship, the sailors, are freaking out. <clears throat> They're calling upon their gods. They're throwing the cargo over, trying to stop um, the ship from uh, sinking. So they find Noah. I'm oh, sorry. I don't know why I keep saying Noah. Jonah. Wow. Jonah. They find him, and they say, hey, wake up. What are you doing? And call, call upon your god, and hopefully your god will stop this the sea from um, ripping us apart. And so they ask him about the question, where are you from? Where, you know, what do you do? What do you, who do you believe in? And so um, Jonah says, no, it's me. This is my fault. And so they say, okay, what do you have to do? And he says, throw me over. And so they throw him into the sea, <clears throat> and uh, then the sea calms down. And we see the, we see the attitude of the sailors were, was much better than Jonah. Right? The sailors aren't, aren't believers. We see that they have their idols they pray to. But at the end of that, they realize that Jonah's God is the God that's there, right? We see him... Uh, see them come and, and uh, make oaths to God and even sacrifice to him at the end of, uh, of chapter 1. And so we see how even that, even when we do things that are wrong, God uses all these things for his glory. Okay, So it's not for us to do things that are wrong on purpose, but it's you know when we do mess up, God uses these, can use these things for his glory, for other, other uh, testimonies. And so um, we see Jonah at the end of uh, chapter 1, a big fish comes up sucks them in right now that'd be kind of terrifying freak in itself you're in the uh you're in the water there and this big fish comes up and you're you're into complete darkness in the belly of this uh this uh, big fish and so we, we you know we can see that maybe that was his punishment you know god's gonna he's gonna die in this fish and that's it but no god knew what it would take for jonah to change his heart okay and so um he needed this. He needed this thing to happen because that's how uh, hard-hearted, that's how stubborn he was in his head. God is willing to change us, right? To give us trials, to, to show us that we need to stop um, the sins or the the, um, the evilness that's in us and to, to soften it and become more like God. And so in chapter 2, <clears throat> um, Jonah is uh, saying a prayer to God. Um, and basically he's saying, th you know, he's thanking the Lord that uh, he sent the fish, that he didn't drown in the water. But we never see that he is um, repentant of his heart towards Nineveh, right? He's still um, not talking about them. He's still not saying, hey, God, you know, please, you know, if you let me go, I'll go and I'll, I'll, I'll be obedient. Um, but he's thanking the Lord. And so that's the first step. God knows it's, it's a process for this, right? For us to be sanctified. That word means that once we become a Christian, for the moment we're a Christian, we're a, a true believer. God's going to work in us until the day we die, and He's going to mold us into the likeness of Christ, which means day by day, year by year, we look more and more like Christ, and our old ways are gone. By trials, God's going to teach us, right, through reading His Word, praying to Him, um, asking questions, going through trials, and, and trusting God. And so it's, it's a race. And so with Jonah, this was his race, and this is what God had to do, the process of his sanctification through him, even a prophet. And so we see the end of chapter 2, um, and the, at the very end it says, And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited ugh, Jonah uh, out upon the dry land. <clears throat> now, being the fish would be kind of freaky. I don't know about you. I don't know if I'd be praying, uh, I'd be begging and crying, everything. Can you imagine being in, the, in that belly of that fish? Um, three days, uh, you think any moment you're going to die, I'm sure it wasn't, you know, he could breathe, obviously, there's oxygen, but 
I'm sure it didn't smell good. Um, I'm sure it didn't feel good, you know, being in the at stomach acid and whatever else is floating around in there. Um, and just, yeah, this complete darkness and, and not knowing second by second uh, what was going to happen. And so, um, but I took that. That's what it took to get Jonah to, to obey God, just to even go to Nineveh, right? And so we see the beginning of chapter 3, <clears throat> and then the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So we see Jonah got up. I'm sure, you know, being vomited out of the fish, I'm sure, you know, there's some uh, theories that he may, his skin may have been very white because of the acid and wrinkly, but who knows? It doesn't say here. So, um, you know, he get up, he goes, he walks there. It's a distance. He gets there <clears throat> and he proclaims to them that, you know, in 40 days, if you do not change your ways, God's going to destroy you. Right, God's going to come down and kill everyone, livestock and all. But we see what happens here. And that everyone hears it, even the king. And the king gives a decree that everyone needs to obey. Wear sackcloths, they have to get cover themselves with ash, human and animals. And they have uh, fast, no food or water. And so they come, they repent to God. Now that itself, I think if we... Um, you know, if we saw that happen, right? Even God used us, or but if, or if we saw that happen, we saw a nation or a group of people that uh, were very sinful, and someone came and, and presented the gospel, and the, all the people, right, from the leader down, um, repented, asked God for forgiveness, and were changing their ways. I think we'd all go, oh my, okay, I, this, I see this amazing thing. I'm, I'm so happy that these people, even these people that hated us, they've changed their ways. But no, Jonah still hates them. Right? We're going to see that in a moment. Um, but we see God working and, and God relenting of his um, his disaster, his, his punishment upon them. Right Now we know God didn't change his mind. Um, God knew this would happen. Right, This is, this is not um, something that, you know, okay, this happened so God changed his mind. Uh, just like us, when we came to know God, we asked God to forgive us so God's wrath was taken away. And so we see here... Um, God was going to punish this uh, Nineveh, all the people in the livestock. But they repented. And when we do that, God promises, you do that, I won't bring my wrath upon you. And so, we, you know, we see a moment here of rejoicing. We see a moment of greatness where all these people stop and are saved. Now they know God. Now they, they can have eternity with Him, right? And we see in verse, I'm sorry, in chapter 4, that Jonah says, he prays to the Lord, he says, um, Oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was yet in my country? This is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. And then he gets very dramatic and says, Lord, please kill me. I'd rather die than watch these people repent. Can you imagine? That's still um, how hard his heart was. That's still how stubborn he was with his feelings towards um, the people in Nineveh and a bit of a drama queen, you know, asking, please kill me. Right. And so, you know, either the guy doesn't do that because God is still teaching him because God is still going to use Jonah for uh, his glory. And so Jonah goes up to the east, sets up a little shelter, <clears throat> a little booth for himself because he's still hoping in his heart that God's going to rain down destruction on him and he wants to see it. All right. And then he'd be happy. Sometimes we can do that in life, can we not? Sometimes that we uh, we don't like people, and we sometimes we want to watch them kind of you know burn, crash and burn. You know, if somebody's you know we don't like is playing playing sports and they trip or fall, they you know face plant. We we enjoy that. We we pl have pleasure in that. We uh, we laugh at it. We kind of giggle and we maybe tell people look what what they did. Or if someone gets in trouble with the teacher. Um, you know. And we kind of rejoice in that. We go, ha ha, they got, they got what they deserved. We got to be careful with that. Right? We want to make sure that we don't become like Jonah in, in his heart the way he is. Um, because God's going to have to teach. He's going to teach us. He's going to put us through trials. And so well, that's why it's so important for us is, you know, if you know Jesus Christ, to be praying to him, to read your Bible. I know it's tough at your age. I know it's this age of so many other things, that distractions that, you know, you know, consume us and then get our attention, and it seems more fun. Um, but as you get older, and God's going to show you guys. You know, if if we if we if you keep coming, you know, going back to those other things and giving that time and 
giving that your love and devotion, God's going to say, hey, no, 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 I'm going to show you these things are wrong. These things aren't right. Um, and so you're going to go through stuff, right? Not like, not like Jonah, but God's going to put things in your life to show you that, no, no, I'm what you need. I'm the one you need to give your, your time to, your love to. It's okay to have all these other things. It's okay to have to play video games, to have sports, to do things you like. But it's do we love those things more than we love God? And so Jonah, we see here, he loved um, the destruction of those people more than he loved God and obeyed God. And so we see here, um, he goes up there and God sends a plant to give him shade because it seems to be really hot and the sun's blaring on him and he's hot and sweaty. And so um, he points a plant to grow and give him shade in Jonah. Um, is glad because of it. He say, oh, I'm so glad this is here because I have shade and I can have some comfort. But then the next day, God appoints a worm to come into it and to wilt it and to kill it. And so we see Jonah uh, is upset and says, again, uh, being a bit of a drama queen, he says, you know, it's better uh, for me to die right now, Lord. And God goes, you show compassion to this plant. Right? This plant that you didn't have any control over, you didn't uh, grow and you couldn't even destroy, but you had compassion over it. And God says, you know, these are the people I made, even the animals, right? We, at the end of chapter 4, you get leaves them with a question. And should, uh, should I not pity Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know the right hand from the left and also much cattle? So basically, God's saying to Jonah, I created all, everyone. I created all, all my creation my animals, my people, and I did it. I have the power. Why would I have compassion upon them? God, we know God is, uh, sends the rain, the sun to shine on the righteous and unrighteous. God cares for everyone. And so for Jonah, who had no skin in the game, had no, couldn't do anything, has no power, you know, he, why wouldn't he have compassion as well? Why would he understand? God had compassion on him. God has shown him. And so for us, um, you know, we can see from this story a couple things that, you know, Jonah, pretty harsh what he did. I think, you know, um, we can look at that and go, ooh, that was, you know, 120,000 people plus cattle that he wanted to crash and burn. He wanted to watch them all die, right? He was happy, you know, God sending down, you know, whatever, um, uh, fire from heaven and destroying them or whatever way. And Jonah was going to enjoy watching people die. Not not the best, you know, right? We all can understand that's not the best attitude, right? But God didn't cast him away. God didn't say, say, Jonah, because you're a prophet, you know better. Even the first step that you ignored me, I'm going to get rid of you. No, God shows mercy upon his people, his sheep. And so for you guys, if you're, you know, when you're struggling, you get in a spot where you feel, hey, I've done too much. That's wrong. I've sinned too much. No, you're, Christ paid for those sins. God's there beside you. He knows you're going to mess up. To the moment you die, we all got sin. God wants us there coming back to him so that he can, just like Jonah, renew us, mold us into Christ's likeness. And for us to go, okay, we can't allow that um, that thought, like Satan wants us like that, that we're too far gone, we're too evil. No, we're God's. God's, he's not going to cast us away. So for us, you know, come back to God, confess your sin, allow God to change you. Other thing is, do we got to? We can't let our, our hearts harden like Jonah, where he hated people. He hated. He wanted to. See, he enjoyed people's destruction. There, he he was enjoying the wrath that was going to come upon them. He wasn't willing to share the gospel, right? And so for us, other people, this or any, do we have any hatred in our heart? And the thing is, we can't have that because we we have God's mercy upon us. God forgave us our sins. God was willing to give us salvation. And who are we to determine who we love, who we care for, who we share the gospel with? We have no right to say that. If we understand what we have, we understand the mercy that's been given to us, um, we will you know, be willing to humble ourselves and share that with everybody. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just like you, know, you, you can look at your school and see the mercy that, you know, Christopher Wagner gives to the grade 8 girls, right, all the time. All the things that they do wrong, and Mr. Wagner is still gracious, and he forgives them. And so, let's look at our God. He's even greater. Right? He forgives us for our sins. And I'm only kidding, grade 8 girls. 
Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, things that we do, God willing to forgive us. And so for us, let us, you know, not think that we're not useful, not think that we've gone too much sin, and, and not hold back on God's um, gospel, right? Let us understand God. And you guys, you're young, you're lucky, you're still young. And you know what? Start your process with God. Start that sanctification. Um, God's got a lot of work to do with you guys, okay? Um, we're in the world. And so God's got to show us Him. He's got to take that veil off our eyes and uh, show us His truth, His righteousness. And so, you know, we have work. We're going to mess up, okay? You're going to mess up many times, okay? And so it's okay. We're all here together. We're not here to judge each other. We're here just to help each other through this race as the body of Christ and care for one another, treat each other properly, uh, and learn how to love. It's going to be tough, right? That's the thing we got to do is we got to learn to love each other, not to hate each other. we got to learn... All these things that God teaches us through His Word. So it's so important. Um, if you don't pray and don't read the Bible, we're going to struggle even more. Okay? So it's, I promise you, uh, you know, if I wish to go back to your age, and I would have started this sooner, but to, to pray to God, to give it to Him, understand who God is, read His Word, ask questions, and to trust the words that we see in Scripture and to trust God uh, who, that we know. So I think I've talked enough. Um, hopefully next time I can see you guys in person. Um, but I hope you guys are doing well. And how about I just finish off and pray that you guys can, uh, I'm sure you'll be excited to get going on your schoolwork. Lord, happy Father, again, we thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity just to, to be able to share with uh, the, the school. And we thank you for the school, Lord. We thank you for the teachers, uh, for the students there, that this, this whole um, organization, Lord, that, that brings your word to it. Or this, uh, this school that is such a blessing for many years, Lord. Many generations have been through this. And but we know um, the blessings and the, uh, the how great it is to have uh, this school. And so, Lord, we thank you for it. We pray that it continues on and you just be there with all the teachers, Lord, and just help them through this and, and just that the school continues for your glory. We just pray, Lord, for all of us. Lord, we struggle. We know we struggle, Lord. We will sin. But I pray, Lord, that we come to you. Lord, you're willing to stand and giving us your mercies, your patience, your kindness, Lord. And when we do mess up, Lord, you're not there or just pointing that out. You're there with your hand out helping us, saying, follow me, and, and to change us into your likeness. And Lord, we know that's when we'll have true uh, peace and joy. And so I want to pray for all the students. I pray, Lord, that you continue to keep them safe, Lord, and that, uh, Lord, you just your spirit would be loud in their hearts, Lord, to guide them each day, Lord, and to show them your mercies. And Lord, not to allow them to, to go on their own strength, but, Lord, to come to yours. We just pray in your name. Amen. Hey, guys. We'll see you guys later.